Welcome back to the channel, welcome back to the vlog, and welcome back to the next episode of my series of Behind the Raw, where I take you with me onto Lightroom Classic and I talk you through my workflow, my thoughts on a particular image, and any errors that I would have made so you don't have to. Now, this week it's the turn of a visit that I did to my favorite place for photography, which is the Dingle Peninsula. And I decided to go down here because there was a storm coming and I knew that I had a window and if I got in before the storm arrived, I would get some perfect conditions. You see, for me, I would love to have great light, a nice strong wind which is blowing the waves and also strong waves. And that's exactly what I got. But I also had an additional thing which I didn't expect was a lot of birds. They were flying around in gannets and they were dive bombing into the water. So luckily I had my, um, well not mine, Dermid's 100 to 500 um, RF lens and I decided to give that a go. And that was quite interesting as well. It was a nice a bonus thing for me to happen on that adventure. Now, I'm not going to edit an image from um, the birds, but if you want to watch that episode, I'll link to it up here. But the image that I'm going to edit today is one which was really, really nice. It really encapsulated exactly what I was looking for. So it's waves that are breaking in on the rocks below me, some fantastic scenery out in the distance with the islands, and then of course I had light. I got some great texture with the speed that I'd gone, and I'll talk you through my thoughts on that image when we jump on to the computer. So yeah, thanks very much for joining, let's go. Okay, so here I am now and I'm going to talk you through the edit of this incredible image. I love it anyway for a number of reasons, but as you can see here on the raw, it's quite dark and that's on purpose because I didn't want to risk overexposing my image. Now the light was quite fleeting as well, but I was aiming for my half a second exposure. And that's a good tip really is, you know, underexpose your image because you can bring the details up. If you overexpose it, then you lose the details because the highlights are blown. So on this example here, <clears throat> I was able to take this shot here at a half a second at ISO uh, 50 and I was at F14. Now I probably could have gone to um, uh, F11 or something like that, but I decided to stick it at uh, F14 and I was at 16 mil. And what I love about this image here, and you really start to see the details come through on it, is the texture and the detail in the waves. Now, looking at this as well, my um, shadow priority here is telling me that this is underexposed, but that's fine because I can bring out the details on that. Now, to give you an idea of what the potential from a raw file is, is if I come in here and just click on auto for argument's sake, you can see now that it brings up all of the detail. You can see all the detail here in these rocks. You can start to see the texture in the water, this big giant wave that broke right before me, and another wave that had broken on the end of this. This was one wave as it came through, and it had so much energy within that. And then on the sky, I had these clouds that were up here, but in the distance, you can just make out here, if I zoom in and give you a look, on the far distance here, this is an approaching storm. So I was here before the storm was going to arrive, and that's precisely what I wanted to achieve. So what I will do here is I'm going to <clears throat> reset the image here, and I'll talk you through my uh, thought process and how I'm going to edit this image. So first and foremost, anyway, what I want to do is I want to check my horizon, and I do know that my horizon was slightly off. If you've seen this episode, actually, you'll know where I was stood. I was at an angle like this, so it didn't really make much of a difference if I said, okay, if I was slightly off, I knew that I could fix this in post. But looking at this here, I'm going to take my grid lines that are going to appear for this part of the horizon up here, and I'm going to straighten that out. No. Looking at that here, it's a very, very small um, change. What was it actually? It was 0 0.36, but now that image is perfectly straight. Now, the other side of things as well is when I start looking at the image overall, what do I want to achieve? I want to play with the sky because the sky is nice, but I want to be able to deal with that quite separately. But I'm going to apply some overall adjustments anyway, first and foremost, and then I'm going to tackle the sky. So firstly, what I want to do is increase the exposure because I purposely underexposed the image. So I'm going to increase the exposure here ever so slightly. Looking at my histogram again is going to tell me what I can and cannot do. But looking at this here, I think that's enough. Maybe I'll just go one stop 
yeah that should be perfectly fine and already you can start to see the details coming out here on the water and this water had a fantastic aqua blue color as well so i'm going to bring that out as well when i come to editing this image now Next thing I want to look at here is again with my histogram, do I need to bring my highlights down or up? Now generally you bring your highlights down, but because I underexpose the image, I can bring my highlights up. And that's going to create a better and more dynamic flow within the image. Now shadows, I can definitely bring those up. If I bring them all the way up here, you see all the detail that's here in these rocks, but it's too much for me because I want to have that probably around about here. I want to see the detail in the rock, but I want you to have also they're dark, they're not exactly bright rocks and the light here was shining in this part out here so no light shining below me uh, as such like that whites be important one because if i bring my whites up too much what i'm going to end up doing is blowing my highlights but i want my whites to be white if i bring my whites back down you'll see they kind of go a gray but if i bring them here they come more of a white and again keeping an eye up on this part of the image here up the top because that's going to be the brightest part you'll see that going red telling me the highlights are whiter than white so that also is on the histogram up here too so if i bring that back you can see that this is corresponding to this over here so that just gives you a visual representation of where it is within the image so i'm going to bring that down slightly and now looking at my histogram here i actually can bring my blacks back down a bit and then it can goes darker than dark as you can see down here but if i bring my blacks slightly up it just makes them and lifts them that little bit more within the image now i don't want to touch dehaze currently generally i would do i mean you know dehaze is going to apply to all of the image but if i do that i'm going to affect the sky and i have to change the sky separately so i'm going to leave off my dehaze right now but actual fact what i will do is i'll whack my dehaze all the way up here you see if we watch these episodes before I've got a good trick to be able to find some sensor spots and I know that I have a couple and I can see that there's one up here so I'm going to go in here <laughs> screen went yellow uh, I'm going to go in here and I'm going to select that and other one I'm going to is select that so there's two sensor spots that I have within this image now I can take my dehaze bring that back down and now those sensor spots are gone now what i also want to look at here is on my vibrance so if i want you to cast your attention into the center part of the image here so if i zoom in uh, to this area here and this was a lovely color of blue so if i just take my vibrance here and bring that up you can start to see some of that blue coming through on this part of the image and also here as well but i want to affect that separately and i'm going to use some masks for that so i think they're all of my um, global uh, adjustments here so now what i'm going to do is i'm going to tackle this sky so i'm going to come up here to the top right hand corner i'm going to select my mask and i'm going to select this sky now that's going to auto detect the sky but again if you've watched these episodes here you'll notice that if i again zoom in here up onto the blasket island you can see that this is bleeding over so if i was to change my exposure here you see the way it's kind of giving a hazy look over the island so i'm going to go on back into my mask i'm going to hit these three dots up here and i'm going to say intersect mask with sky and i don't know why it does it but what it does is it fixes that issue so now if i bring this down it's only affecting the sky and it's not affecting the island so i'll zoom back out here to fit the screen and i'm just going to adjust my exposure ever so slightly on the sky because i want to be able to bring out the detail within those clouds so for me that's perfectly fine here now the next i'm going to do is create a new mask and i'm going to go into luminance range so that's going to pick whatever i use the picker on and i'm going to say okay i want this which is the part of the wave because i want to try and bring out more detail in this wave so i click on this here it's going to do an analytic on it and it's going to say okay it's going to affect the top areas but also moreover it's going to only affect these areas which is the water and i know if i make these changes up here it won't make much of a difference because they're the darker parts of the clouds so from that point of view now what i can do is i can say okay i want to increase my exposure on those and you can see now it's only affecting those areas and then i want to also increase my contrast and by increasing my contrast if you watch on this area here you'll see that the texture starts to come out in those waves and you don't need a lot of contrast to do that but just enough to keep that and to keep the texture 
within the image and not make it too crunchy. Uh, then I'm going to look down here and I'm going to say, okay, do I need to add any dehaze into this to bring out more detail? And you see, just a touch on that, and now you can start really seeing all the texture coming out in the wave. And then moreover, if I start to look here and say, okay, of these areas, these are white. I don't need to change any of the vibrance in that. I can do that as an overall adjustment. So from there, come back out of this, I'm going to put my image into fit and now I can say okay I could be done but I want to now put in some dehaze. If I put in dehaze now after making those adjustments these are global and you see now I start to get that detail coming out in the sky and now you can really see the detail and the texture coming out in these waves below. Now finally the histogram is going to tell me what I can and cannot do so I've got a bit of room here to be able to bring up the exposure overall so if I bring this up slightly here make the image that bit brighter you'll still keep all the texture that you have in the waves and then I'm just going to add a slight bit of contrast to the overall image here and then I think that image will be done. I really like this. If I give you a look now you have the island in the distance here which is the Blasket Island. You've got Antirukt that's here and then just over here on the right hand side you've got Anfar Marav and then to this side over here you've got Dunmore Head which is a fantastic area for photography. Uh, these rocks that are in front of me as well, this was low tide by the way, but these rocks here were taking some battering and now you look at the texture and the detail here in this water. Now, there is one challenge with this because I underexpose the image. <clears throat> I am going to have noise within the image. So I'm going to go into my detail here. <coughs> Excuse me. And I'm going to click on denoise. And what that's going to do is it's going to run the uh, algorithm or the AI on this and look and say, okay, what does it need to affect? Now, actually, it's good because it's, it's actually zooming into the area that I want to zoom into, which is this. So if I give you a look at this dialog box here and I move this along, you'll start to see the noise that's here within this wave. But what it now does is it removes that and keeps all of the texture. Another area as well that I did have quite a bit of noise was in the sky. So if I come up to the top here, you'll see particularly up around these clouds. You can see there's a lot of noise here in the darker area, but now that is being removed. And that ultimately creates a much more pleasing image for me. So I'm going to click on this, allow it to do its enhance, and then what that effectively will do is create a very, very clean and smooth image. I really, really, really enjoyed this shoot. It's exactly why I love seascape photography. And I hope you've enjoyed now seeing my approach to editing this final image. Oh, actually, I'll come back to it for a second here. Let's wait until this is done and I'll show you the before and the after because that's an important one to be able to know what you can get out of a raw file. So here it is now, <clears throat> just rendering the uh, image here for me. We'll just give this a moment. And now if I click on my backslash, that's going to give me my before and my after. So here is the before and here is the after. And it's amazing the detail that you can bring out on that image here. It brings up all of the shadow, all of the texture overall. And for me, it's a very, very nice image. I love the texture on that. So yeah, <clears throat> I've got a frog in my throat today. Thank you very much as always for joining. Like I said, I hope you've enjoyed this episode and you've seen something new in my approach to this image. If it's your first time on the channel, I would really appreciate if you hit the subscribe button, give me a like, give me a comment, and hopefully I'll see you on my next episode next Sunday. So until then, Schlange voll.